Carrying capacity is the maximum population of a species that an environment can sustain indefinitely without negative impacts on the environment or the organisms. The carrying capacity takes into account the food, water, habitat, and other necessities required for those organisms. The factors that go into determining the carrying capacity of an environment change based on the species in question. For example, in the case of calculating the carrying capacity for humans, we take into consideration factors such as sanitation and medical care. When the number of organisms is below the carrying capacity for an environment, the population will usually increase. And when the population is greater than the carrying capacity, it will usually decrease. And the factors that keep or turn this population towards this equilibrium are known as regulating factors. Two common ways or patterns that populations below their carrying capacity grow to reach that carrying capacity are known as the sigmoid phenomena and the peak phenomena. A sigmoid growth, which is also known as a K-selected or a K-selection species, Populations that demonstrate the case selection pattern of growth increase rapidly when food, water, and habitat are abundant. But this growth slows down as regulation factors such as reduced food or changes in birth rates come into play. These regulation factors make the population growth taper or even out. Populations that follow the pattern of peak phenomena are also known as R-selected or R-selection species. In our selection growth, the same regulation factors don't come into play as happened in the K-selection growth. And this causes the population to peak above the carrying capacity. This growth above the carrying capacity causes an exhaustion of available resources. This makes it so that mortality becomes the main regulatory factor. The death of organisms in the population causes this population to collapse. And then, as resources replenish, the population spikes and peaks again. This is known as a boom and bust population cycle. It's important to understand the factors that go into determining the carrying capacity of a particular environment for a particular species. There are four main factors that go into determining the carrying capacity of an environment. These are food availability, water availability, space, and ecological conditions. Food and water availability are pretty straightforward. This is how much food is available to the species and how much water is available to the species. And this will change in an environment based on the requirements of each species. For example, larger organisms will generally require more food and more water. When these resources are unavailable or are limited, organisms in a species will experience what's called food stress. In some cases, food stress leads to changes in the diet of organisms. For example, herbivores often have preferred foods and emergency foods. As preferred foods become limited or unavailable, herbivores will often turn to emergency foods. In many cases, emergency foods are lacking the necessary nutrients for that organism's healthy survival. Food stress and transitioning from preferred foods to emergency foods can make organisms weaker and more susceptible to predation. It's important to note that food and water are very interrelated. In most cases, when water becomes limited, food also becomes limited because of their close relationship. As we calculate the carrying capacity of an environment, Food availability and water availability play a large role in determining how many organisms a particular environment can sustain. Space also influences the carrying capacity of an environment. Space most often refers to shelter for an organism and can impact their ability to rest and reproduce. There is also a relationship to food and water uptake because based upon the space that's available, there is a connection to where food and water can be found. Finally, ecological conditions have an impact on the carrying capacity of an environment. Some ecological conditions to consider are proximity to humans, climate or weather, or even pollution. Each of these and other factors can reduce or increase the amount of organisms that can be supported in a particular area, 
and therefore directly impact the carrying capacity of that environment. 